the Father Duaneus Friars taking care of business against the Guam High Panthers and IFL football action over at Guam High. FD picking up the win big, 33-6 behind running backs Leon Shimizu and DeAndre Cruz. A Guam High's lone score of the game came off a huge run by Solomon White, who took the snap, wait for it, 69 yards to the house after making some shifty moves to get into the open field. Cruz would later punch in another TD from about five yards out to seal the deal. On other Week 3 IFL games, the JFK Islanders beat the Simon Sanchez Sharks 14-zip. Ukadu Bulldogs edged out the Southern High Dolphins 12 0 and the Geckos got the win over Tizen High 31 6. Caught in the crossfire. You could definitely say that about the students at Simon Sanchez High School in Jigo. This after Cortec, the company that lost a bid to repair and renovate the Jigo campus, is fighting GovGuam's decision. In fact, fighting the decision may be an understatement. Cortec has filed two protests, lost both of those protests, and then appealed both of those losses. You still with me? Now this has delayed even further the process of repairs and rebuilds at Sanchez and student athletes have been left out in the cold by Cortex's refusal to move on and just deal with it. In fact, Sanchez's gym was closed down at the beginning of the school year, leaving several shark sports teams scrambling to find somewhere to practice. And one of those teams, the Simon Sanchez girls volleyball team, took it upon themselves to get the ball rolling with a little help from other student athletes to prepare for the upcoming sports season. We spent more time painting and cleaning up the gym during the summer um, than actually touching a volleyball. The team had to practice next door at FB Leon Guerrero and even a whole village away in Dedido. And they're not the only team suffering. While the future of a Sanchez upgrade hangs in the balance, get this, for years, the Sharks football team has had to have their home games away. Jigo Mayor Rudy Matanani, alumni and students of Sanchez, recently holding protests to say enough is enough. I believe all the students feel like it's such a struggle with the facilities, but you know we're very grateful that they're finally doing something about it and someone is speaking out for us. Now the girls say they'll remain competitive this season. It's only the shark way. The school's drill team and boys basketball team has thrived under adversity. Even though the campus is broken down, the students persevere and keep their heads up. It kind of gives us more motivation to play better because, you know, just because we don't have a very good facility doesn't mean that we're not a good team. The winning company is ready to go and the students are tired of waiting. So Coach Galang says she reminds her girls to keep their heads in the game. It's really up to you to change the game and it's really up to you to come and want to play. Galang says the gym leaks and athletes and coaches have had to deal with birds flying in the gym and defecating on players during practice. A sad metaphor if this reporter ever saw one. I hope they do something real quick about it. Instead of fighting with each other, work together. There's no telling how much longer losing bitter Cortec will draw out what some call their frivolous protests. But one thing is clear, the real losers here, the students at Sanchez who like their namesakes, the Sharks, just got to keep swimming, no matter how rough the waters may be. We have a lot of heart here in this team, and I think Sanchez is going to bring it. Sablan and Leon Guerrero say although they may not get to play in new facilities, they remain hopeful Sanchez's underclass will get to. Coach Galang says it is a case of better late than never, but the kids have waited long enough, and she's hoping maybe Santa will have a little surprise for Sanchez students come December. Be a good Christmas gift.